Greetings, traveler. I am Sir Knox, the teller of tales. Would you like to hear one? This one is called That Time the Moderators of a Roleplay Website Couldn't Agree on If They Should Ban a Pedophile. Well, that's obviously an easy decision. Why was it so difficult for them? Let's find out. This happened a ways back, but I was recently reminded of it. A long time ago, I was involved in a role-playing website. It was a play-by-post website based around a popular anime that had a good amount of activity. If you know these kinds of websites, you know that anyone can sign up, make a user account, and start playing. Users would come and go, and a few stayed and made up the core player base. This particular website allowed mature content, nothing too R-rated like having smut out in the open forum, but it was mostly there for blood and violence and guns and foul language and other edgy topics. This will be important later. I was a player on this website and eventually became a moderator, so I had a little bit of say-so, but not a lot. The website had an RPG system made by one of the admins, and so moderators were mostly needed to make sure that no one was cheating, to run combat in the system, approve character progression, and make sure that people were being civil. It could be a job upon itself sometimes, and I have many other horror stories I can tell about it, and the drama that festers in the bowels of all play-by-post role-playing sites, but this one stands out as one of the worst. One day, we got a new player, which happens every once in a while. And familiar to anyone who's ever been on a play-by-post forum, this player made a thread introducing themselves to the community, which was the style at the time. Because this was basically just one big website ran by a bunch of people who liked telling stories, we didn't have anything fancy for auto-sending information to these new players. So as a mod, it's good form to say hello to the new player alongside the player base and give them some basic guidance. Stuff like telling them who the mods are, that they can DM with questions, linking threads on how to get started, and making a polite introduction on behalf of the site staff. So I enter the thread to read it. It's a basic thread at first. The player says hello and cites their interests and experiences and other basic things to say hello. Though at the end, something gave me a bad gut feeling. The new player made a joke about being a lollicon. See what weebs call pedophiles to make it sound less bad, but in an off-putting way that made it come across as joking but not really. Obviously, that's an insta-ban. To start, that's pretty inappropriate and could have been a joke in poor taste. But my gut told me something was off and play-by-post staff are a bunch of gossips anyway, so I messaged an admin to take a look at it. I didn't advise they do anything, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't just me. I was at work at the time on a smoke break and wouldn't be able to give it my full attention all day. I came back to a circus. The admin trusted my gut and agreed with me and banned the play on the spot. Good! This ruffled some feathers. Why? With other staff who weren't on and didn't know what happened. To add more fuel to the fire, we had recently had a staff meeting just days prior about metering out punishments for players after a few of them got into a pretty vicious argument, and we had to temp ban everyone to get them to stop overflowing pub chat with insults and fighting. We agreed on having a three-strike system and documenting offenses if someone continued to be a problem. We let anyone play on the site so you can get some people who don't play nice or don't act appropriately or cheat in the RPG system since it's not like we screen people. And that it would be a group decision to hand out permanent bans. The admin I messaged banned the lollicon without messaging anyone else about it beforehand and it started a fight in staff chat. I can understand the fight over that banning someone after you just had a meeting about it, but I feel like there's certain things that should just be a zero, a zero tolerance policy where you don't need three strikes. So for instance, a pedo is insta-banned, reported to authorities, and obviously whatever else you can do to try and prevent this person from being an absolute horrible part of society. If someone's cussing or breaking the rules or fighting or just being an ass, then obviously the three strikes make sense, the warning system makes sense, but there should be zero tolerance things where you don't need a meeting to ban somebody. But like you said, this was a long time ago, so maybe you're still working out all those issues or problems or strategies or methods or whatever. Anyways, let's continue. A few staff happened to agree that the thread didn't read right, but the majority were much more forgiving, claiming it could have been inappropriate humor and we shouldn't be quick to bring down the ban hammer. I happened to agree with them at the time before I knew better. We didn't have enough to go on and we weren't a ban-happy staff. One of the other admins goes ahead and unbans the lollicon without consulting anyone else. This is where shit hits the fan. 
The lolicon comes back into pub chat and starts publicly claiming how rude it was to get banned. I am assuming it was a him on the spot, which is understandable. But then he got creepy about it. Instead of saying something like, I was making a joke or I didn't mean for it to come off that way, he said something to the effect of, I thought everyone here was a like-minded person of similar interests, and everyone here is probably of age, so I don't see the big deal. So, yeah, he was actually a freaking pedo. I may be understating it here, but the way this guy was talking, he was very clearly and obviously attracted to children and identified as a lolicon. Unironically, not a joke. You think that would be the end of it, but I wouldn't be here if it was. How do you not ban him after that? Like reban, perma ban. The admin that originally banned him immediately bans the lolicon again, and then staff chat explodes with infighting. You think that we could all be on the same page of pedos are bad, but apparently that was subjective, and I saw some truly rancid takes come from half of the site staff. Yikes. Time to leave this website and report the entire site, I guess. Half of them were like me. They saw an obvious pedo and wanted to keep him off the website. It's a mature role-playing site, but we all know how well that works out. I knew for a fact that more than one member was younger than 16, and I knew other staff knew it too, which makes it even worse. The other half, and I do mean half, as in roughly 50% of people in charge of this website, wanted to defend the pedo. The arguments from the other staff were, you didn't follow the three strikes system. The nature of the offense doesn't matter. It's got to be three strikes and you need to issue warnings and document. Ridiculous given the context of the situation. Obviously, like I said before, there should be zero, zero tolerance policies, especially when it comes to this stuff. There's no strikes needed. What, you, you need three strikes of being a pedo before you get banned? I don't think so. We all have to agree to ban a member, and no one else knew this was happening. To be fair, this was pretty reasonable. These people mostly didn't know what was going on, and banning a member is a serious event that almost never happens. And the worst one. Until he does anything bad, being attracted to minors isn't illegal, and he has a right to be here like anyone else. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's not acceptable. I lost all respect for some people. I would have called friends for that one. People, as in more than one person, held this opinion. That's unfortunate. It all culminated in a standoff. The staff that were of the opinion that pedos are bad and shouldn't be around children threatened to quit all at once and expose staff logs to pub chat or send a message to everyone's account individually if they banned us or took the message down so that the player base could be aware that the remaining staff defending the pedo had chosen to keep the pedo around on the website so they could make their own informed decision with that information. In doing so, this certainly, without a doubt, would have killed it as staff was overworked already and couldn't afford half the moderators and one of the two admins, and the one who actually did anything 90% of the time to quit and still keep the game running, never mind anyone else who would have left because of the fallout. In the end, it actually came down to a staff vote instead of something like common sense. The lolicon remained banned and didn't come back as the staff that defended him acquiesced and were outvoted, though some of them were pretty passive-aggressive about it. Nobody quit or made staff grief public, since the matter was already dealt with, which is kinda messed up in hindsight. As for me, I foolishly continued to moderate the website on staff, if nothing else than to keep some of these idiots from pulling some dumb shit like this again, until the website killed itself from completely unrelated drama. As is the natural life cycle for any play-by-post game. Yikes. I don't, yeah, I don't know why you stayed. I mean, obviously, if, if half of the staff were like that, I would have just left. That's not even a, an environment I want to be around. I guess in your defense, you said you wanted to stay around to prevent the people that shouldn't have power allow something to happen. I guess I understand that perspective, but I would have left, honestly, because that's just, like I said, just there's just certain things that are completely unacceptable, and this is one of those things. Anyways, that was our tale for today. If you'd like to hear more, come back and I shall tell you some.